three for men. For women, zero one four six five seven one nine zero. You just call, you answer a really simple question, and you get the ticket for yourself. It's very easy. I know. Ninety nine point three. Hello. Hello, good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon. Would you like a ticket to Praise Jam? Yes, yes, I want a ticket. Why do you want a ticket to Praise Jam? I just want to go and choose the bad I've been longing to get a ticket. You've been longing to get a ticket. Who, yeah, who is yeah. one of the artists performing aside Mercy Chingwa? Hello. Who is performing except Mercy Chingwa? Okay, Papa Alabi. Topo Alabi. All right, Topo Alabi. Yeah. Correct. Stay on the line. Let's get your number and then your email address. Congratulations to you. I hope Thank I you. see you on Monday. Do we have a call screener who is working who can retrieve Thank that you. call? Do we have a call screener who is working who can retrieve that call? All right. Someone has done that. 99.3. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon to you. What's your name? My name is Ben. Ben, good to have you on the show. Come back here. So, if we give you a ticket, are you going to go to Praise Jam? Yeah, sure, I'll go. Are you sure? That is hundred percent. Tell me, someone who's performing at Praise Jam this year? Um, Messi is performing. Who else? Um, Tope Aladi is performing. Who else? Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Ah. Remember. Okay, I'll give you because you remember two of them. So stay on the line. Congratulations. Right, you get a ticket for yourself. Hold on. Let's get your number so that we can get in touch with you after here. All right? All right. What's your number? Benedict. All right, Benedict. Thank you so much and congratulations again. All right. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. We'll give you a call and collect your email address. Huh? Thank you so much. Okay, we'll give uh, three more people and then we'll move on uh, with today's show. 99.3. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name? Onyechi. Can you turn your radio off so that I can be hearing you now? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear hello? you now. Onyinyechi, hello. Hello, Sandra. Congratulations, Onyinyechi. Good afternoon. Can you, tell me, can you tell me the name of the host for Praise Jam this year? Uh, Who is hosting Praise Jam? I don't know. You don't know, but you want to call my B? Yes. So we should give you the ticket, Abby. Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> Alright, stay on the line. Let's give you the ticket. Stay on the line. Let's give you the ticket. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so we've got how many now so far? One, two. Uh, Onyechi is the third person. So I'll give one more ticket. Uh, one more. Should I give two? Let me give two. So give two more tickets and then I'll uh, bring you the rest of the day's show. Hello. How are you? Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for calling. What's your name? My name is Victor. Victor. Victor, you want to go to Praise Jam? Yes. Victor, who's hosting Praise Jam? Kenny Black. Kenny Black is correct. Victor, stay on the line. Let's get your number, all right? All right, thank you. All right. What's your number, Victor? All right, Victor, congratulations and thank you so much for calling us. We're going to give you a call and then we'll give you that ticket, all right? All right, thank you so much for calling and congratulations again to you. One final lucky person. Who's that going to be? Hello? Hello? Ah, see village people. 99.3, hello? Hey, more village people. 99.3, hello? Hello? Hello. Hello. What's your name? Mercy. Mercy. Mm, Mercy, you are my last call for right now. How does that wow. feel? How does that feel? Um, I'm happy. I didn't know my call was going to go through. Yeah, so you're lucky. You're feeling very lucky, huh? 
Mm-hmm. Are you really yeah. are, 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 are you really gonna come if I give you this ticket? Yeah, I'm gonna come. Are you gonna come? Definitely, like I will. Like you cross your heart and promise to come. Definitely, I'll come. All right, stay on the line. Stay on the line. Let's get your number from you and your email address and all of that good stuff. All right, congratulations to you. I'm not even going thank to ask you. you any questions because I like your voice and I like your name and you're oh, the last call. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, stick around. Let's get your number. Lagos, we've got more tickets to give away right here on 99.3. But remember that uh, we are still your number one station for talk and we love to cover all the news stories that you care about. So if you witness a story or a news event and you want Lagos to know about it, please call us on 01465-7175. 01465-7175. I always say that one million Lagosians listen to hard facts and they cannot be wrong. They choose us. So if those one million Lagosians cannot be wrong, uh, if they think it's news, it's probably news. I have a great show for you today. We've started with the tickets giveaway. But now let's uh, move on to the big three shall we? We'll talk about Nasu and Sanu extending their strike indefinitely. Then let's talk about the IGP saying that the police is not doing enough to secure the country. And then let's talk about over 40% of new voter registrations being invalid. Hmm. On Eyewitness, I want us to talk some more about domestic violence and whether our different institutions are doing enough to protect domestic abuse survivors and help them escape. 4 p.m. Let's have that conversation. On today's Big Hard Fact, let's talk about the supernatural. Benga Adewoyi is back to update us on his 2 million naira challenge to Nigerians to prove to him that Juju is real. So he has gone to Oshun State, he has gone to Ibadan, he has gone to Anambra, and he's back in Lagos, and nobody has been able to take away his 2 million naira. What's that about? He'll join me on the show today at 5 p.m. Make sure you don't miss that conversation. Expect news, business, and sports at the top of the hour every hour. But let's get started with today's big three. Lagos, I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, and these are your hard facts. This is the big three. The big three. Nigeria Info. Can public tertiary education be salvaged? Can the security architecture be improved? How can INEC reduce voter registration failure rates? Those are the big three. Lagos, let's talk. University non-academic staff and senior staff are threatening to extend their strikes. That's our first story. Sanu and Nasu. Uh, They had first declared a two-week warning strike. But according to them, the federal government did not respond to any of their letters about the issues. So they extended the warning strike by another two weeks. And now those two weeks are coming to an end. And the unions say that the government has still not replied. So that's why they are now talking about an indefinite strike. Now let's talk about why they are on strike. Here are the grievances both Nasu and Sanu say they want government to resolve. Inconsistencies in salary payments through IPPIS, non-payment of earned allowances, non-payment of arrears of uh, national minimum wage, Poor funding of state universities, delay in renegotiation of the 2009 agreements, non-release of white papers of visitation panels, non-payment of retirement benefits. So these are seven points the university staff are striking over. You can divide those issues into three. Uh, Staff are being owed money, schools are not being properly funded, and reforms are not being implemented. Government has said that uh, in the past, uh, money is the problem. That's what government has said. Uh, they don't have the money to do all these things that they are obliged to do. Uh, these things that they have promised to do. These things which they agree would be best for the universities. And that's why they have uh, all these MOUs that uh, they've negotiated. They've renegotiated different kinds of agreements. The basic idea is government acknowledges that it owes the universities and the unions X amount but they are going to pay a little bit for now and promise to pay the rest later. That's the agreement that they currently have. But the unions are saying that government has repeatedly failed to uphold 
even those pay small, small agreements. When you ask government about it, they say, look, money no day. You can't draw blood from a stone. We can't give what we don't have. And honestly, Lagos, I want to talk to you about that because have we gotten to a point where governments simply cannot fund public tertiary education anymore? This should be a debate topic uh, for our May tournament. Have we gotten to a point where governments simply cannot fund tertiary education, public tertiary education anymore? Have we gotten to that point? And if we have gotten to that point, what is the way forward? Most Nigerians simply cannot afford private uh, tertiary education. We need the cheaper public option. But if governments simply cannot fund it, how do we fund it? Because the money will not appear simply because we want it to. Abby, in a lot of Western countries, we're seeing public universities getting less and less money from government. Over the decade, government funding of public universities has reduced, while funding from foundations, endowments, cooperations, they've all increased. So that's one model. The question here is, what needs to be done to get Nigerians to set up foundations and endowments to help subsidize public education? Also, what do universities need to do to attract more investment from the corporate world? So, for example, you, you have these tech companies growing in the Nigerian ecosystem, right? And they need all sorts of professionals, right? They need software developers, product managers, designers, growth leads, copywriters, business managers, you name it. Is there no way that governments can create schemes that encourage these companies to partner with universities so that they fund courses that help the universities train the graduates that the companies need? That's kind of what happened at Silicon Valley. So that's one route that they could take. The other route for funding education is student loans. If there were a robust system that students borrow against future earnings. Then universities set their fees at high enough prices to fund properly. Could it work? Now, the challenges are obvious. You know, we don't have much of a credit system in Nigeria. Uh, there are very few jobs waiting for graduates. Uh, very many graduates are competing for the same jobs. So if student loans were to be giving out at the current level of admissions, you're probably going to end up with a lot of non-performing loans. But it raises a question that a lot of people shy away from, right? The current university system is it rational? I know I'm asking so many questions at the same time, and it may be difficult for you to keep track, but I'm giving you a lot of angles so that you can attack this conversation from whatever angle that you're most comfortable with. The current university system, is it rational? Let me tell you what I mean. Every day we hear that the Nigerian economy does not have enough white-collar jobs to absorb all the graduates already in the market. And yet every year, the university system keeps producing a high number of graduates. And all the while, the university system keeps uh, uh, complaining. Universities continue to complain that their facilities are substandard, their lecturers are underpaid, government says it doesn't have uh, enough money to pay for what all of these universities need. And the question is, should the universities be thinking about scaling down? Should the universities be thinking about reducing or scrapping degree programs with low employability levels? For example, I'm not going to name any names, but there are some courses that even as you are studying the course, Seth, you can't think of a single office in the country that employs people with your degree. It's almost like going to school for going to school's sake. Meanwhile, there are other countries where there are always job offers because not enough graduates are coming out. Other courses, sorry, not countries. So should universities be thinking about scrapping some of these courses, increasing others? Should the federal government be thinking about closing down or merging some federal universities? The other day, Asu was um, criticizing the National Assembly for passing laws creating new universities while government is still owing the existing ones. Do you agree with Asu that it doesn't make sense to keep creating more schools under the current conditions? 
So again, very difficult conversation, but I hope we can have it. How can we salvage the tertiary education sector? <sighs> 01465-7190. That's for women. For men, 0700-993-993-993. We've got WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 80 959 We're streaming live on Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3. We're streaming on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM. 99.3. Hello. Hello. Thanks for calling. What's your name? Sandra. Yes. My name is Ziggy. I'm calling from Ajawa Street. Ziggy, welcome. Thank you. Right. My take on the tertiary institution always going on strike and the, all the questions we are putting to us this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Until we, the masses, stop being praise singers to those in government, they will continue to go on strike and will continue to complain. Listen, you ask us a question and I will, I, it's time for me to ask you your own. What is of the public? that government is funding, what is it in Nigeria that is of the public that the government is funding very well? The truth is this, they are collapsing everything that is of the public and they are opening the private sectors which belongs to them and they will continue to co collect our money, okay, like in a private, uh, this uh, private school is owned directly or indirectly by the government. Okay, like the tertiary institution that we are talking about now, they are closing everyone that belongs to the government and they are opening up uh, private ones that is owned by them and they will continue to collect our money. So that's just the truth. Until we continue, until we start demanding what is ours from these people, they are not ready to do the needful. They will continue to suppress us, they will continue to collect our money, they will continue to make us our, uh, their slaves. Okay, that's just the truth. There is nothing of government that they are funding. Everything they are collapsing it. They have collapsed the, pri the primary school. They have collapsed the secondary school. They have collapsed the tertiary institution now, and they have opened up private uh, primary school, uh, private secondary school, private institutions. Okay, look at uh, last week. How many uh, private uh, universities that the Mr. President gave license to start operating? Why are is on strike? Have you asked yourself, why all this? It's because they have collapsed everything. They have collapsed everything. Just check it from our refinery, from our railway, everything they have collapsed it. Okay? And everything is owned by, by them privately. So they have collapsed the country. Until we wake up as a people, believe you me, we will continue to be these people's slaves. Thanks for calling, Ziggy. Um, again, if we say that government is in funding, um, uh, government is in funding public education, it doesn't that mean that it is time to perhaps say, okay, well, you know what, stop funding it. Period. Let's look for other ways to fund these institutions that government seems unable to sufficiently fund. Francis is, in, okay. is on the line. Hi, Francis. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm asking uh, who is funding a uh, public uh, and public university? Um, the school fees. Uh, uh, well, right, the, the, the student is in a uh, public uh, uh, university. I pay school fee now. That's right. Okay. What are they using the school fee to do? And if the, if the government, if the government is that they cannot fund the, they cannot say to the, the lecturer in the university. So which, which, which one the government is funding in Nigeria? They are not funding education. They don't have money to fund education. If you go to the hospital, they send it. They even the first subsidy that the Nigeria for they say they cannot do it. Which one are they, which one are they funding in Nigeria? Eh? Are you, in, in Moreover, if I ask them, what, what, what is the essence of having government that they cannot fund education that the, the children they are, they are going to school? Everywhere, they, they are all over the place and the children are at home now. No one is going to school. And the government is there. They say we have government and they are, they are, they are happy about but, it. But this is not just a Nigerian problem. Like I said, all over the world, more and more governments are, are removing hand from funding public education because you have other organizations who are stepping up to fill that space. You know, um, the only places you have government actively funding education are like communist um, 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 countries. 
ways, you know. And I do not think that, I do not believe that Nigeria is practicing communism. Now, we do have elements of government funds in public spaces. So, for instance, you go to a general hospital, the bills are, are very uh, uh, cheap, depending on who you're talking to. Um, you go to uh, uh, some public schools, their tuition is very low. Nigeria is one of the, 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 the cheapest places to get a university degree. Um, power, for the longest time, was being funded by the government. Uh, fuel is being funded. The petrol you use in your vehicle, government is funding that. So there's a lot of places, a lot of public um, uh, things that the government is currently funding. The question is, is it working? Is it time for government to stop funding it, period? Yeah, if they know that they cannot, they cannot fund it, they do it the way that the private university are doing it now. Even the private university, they are funding the school by themselves. So that they, 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 the way that they can do it, that they, they can remove their completely from the public school. Let the, 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 the lecturer that are in school, the manager of the school, they know how to manage the school so that from there they are able to settle the lecturer that are in school. All right, Francis, thanks for calling. 99.3, hello? Hi, Sandra, how are you? I'm okay, what's your name? Abiri from Yaba. Welcome, Abiri. Thank you. So you've asked us so many questions. I'll just touch on a couple. Okay. So um, obviously the government is not doing a good job of funding the universities. Right. So I think we need to find a way to either either have um, private, uh, what is it called? CPP, whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. Where the private can join. And um, I feel like some of our companies that are doing really well can also maybe have foundations that will do something for instance, if they had foundations that would support the um, universities, mm. then when the, maybe the graduates can come work for them or something. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I think they need to scale down. Okay. So if a state has three and only one technically is functional, just do the one and know that you have quality, yeah. not quantity. Yeah. I also think that um, we can concentrate on STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. So even when you finish, even if you don't get a job here, you're likely to get one overseas, as opposed to some of these archaic courses. Right. You know, the the thing we have to be creative. Right. Education is so crucial. Right. We really need to do something. I do. Thank you, Sandra. And I think today's it's today your birthday. It's not. It's Andrea's birthday. But everyone oh, okay. everyone keeps calling me and saying happy birthday. It's not oh, my birthday. Happy birthday! Your birthday. Okay. <laughs> <It's> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Bioye, always a pleasure to hear from you. It's not my birthday today. I'm getting lots of messages on social media. It's Andrea Teke's birthday. Uh, uh, Colin Teke's wife. That's whose birthday it is. All right, Lagos, we'll take a break. When we come back from this break, I want to keep hearing your thoughts on this um, uh, tertiary education palava. Do you think that public tertiary education can be salvaged? We'll keep checking your thoughts. And then we'll also talk about various people in government saying uh, different things about the security situation. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. Don't go away. Praise Jam is back. This Easter, it's back. Bigger and better. Your favorite soul-lifting music concert is here. Praise Jam, the resurrection. Featuring Nigeria's biggest gospel acts and other great performances. Date, April the 18th, 2022. Time, 12 p.m. The venue, the Echo Convention Center. Tickets now available at ariatickets.com for 5,000 Naira regular and 10,000 Naira VIP. Early bird, 3,000 Naira. So hurry, beat the rush and grab your tickets online now. Your Easter will never be the same again. Praise Jam, the resurrection. Don't be told, be there. This event is certified by the Lagos State Safety Commission. The definition of greatness starts from the moment to become one.
The venue, the Echo Convention Center. For tickets now available at ariatickets.com for 5,000 Naira regular and 10,000 Naira VIP. Early bird, 3,000 Naira. So hurry, beat the rush and grab your tickets online now. will never be the same again. Praise God for the resurrection. Don't be told, be there. <laughs> this event is certified by the Liquor Stick Safety Commission. Live Life Point 3, Nigeria Info. Your number one station for talk. Let's talk. It's 3.31, and for our second story, let's take a look at what various people in government are saying about the security situation. Inspector General of Police Al-Khali Baba admits that um, the security services are falling short in spite of their best efforts. He said, quote, we're doing our best, our best is not enough. And everyone is synergizing. The military is in and other security agencies are in. We're even more endangered. There's no day our men are not killed. We have been trying and we shall continue to try. End quote. And of course, the biggest security situation right now is the Abuja Kaduna train attack and the fate of the hostages. Uh, Defense Minister Bashir Magashi has confirmed that the terrorists operating in the area, often called bandits, are now working with Boko Haram. He said, quote, what is happening now is that there's a kind of an unholy handshake between bandits and Boko Haram insurgents. Preliminary reports of what transpired at the Kaduna train attacks show that there's a kind of collaboration between the bandits and the dislodged Boko Haram terrorists from the northeast. I can tell you very confidently that the federal government is on top of this matter, end quote. That's a very significant assertion from the defense minister. And of course, it probably means that the armed forces and intelligence agencies are having to refine their tactics in fighting these evildoers. But for the moment, the House of Reps seems very unsatisfied with their performance. We heard from Yusuf Gagdi, the chairman of the House Committee on the Navy. He wants the service chiefs and other security bosses to explain why the situation is the way it is, in spite of all the money that the House has voted for security and defense. Gagdi said, quote, there must be someone somewhere that has neglected his responsibility or failed to discharge his duty to the best of his ability, end quote. By the way, UNICEF has said that over 11,000 schools have closed in Nigeria since December 2020 due to insecurity. We were talking about the effects of poor funding on, pub on public tertiary education during our first story. But as you can see, insecurity is causing a problem at the primary and secondary levels as well. But that's what the different leaders are saying about the security situation in the country. What do you say? What do you think about what they're saying? Men call me on 0700-993-993-993. Women call me on 01465-7190. And yes, you can talk about our first story. I took you all over the place with that story. Uh, we talked about um, the unions saying that they're going to uh, extend their strike. I'm talking about Nas Nasu and Sanu now. That's the university non-academic staff and senior staff uh, threatening to extend their strikes. Uh, we talked about funding, right? 
right? And I, I was asking you if we have gotten to a point where government simply cannot fund public tertiary education anymore. And if that's where we've gotten to, what's the way forward? Because if we're being very honest, a lot of Nigerians, most Nigerians, cannot afford private tertiary education. So we need a cheaper public option. But if government simply cannot fund it, how do we do it? The money will not appear because of magic. So how do we do it? Is the current university system rational? Do we need all the universities we have at the moment? Because universities are complaining that their facilities are substandard, lecturers are underpaid, government is saying we don't have enough money to pay for uh, what all these universities need. Should the universities be thinking about scaling down? Should the universities think about reducing or scrapping some degree programs that don't have high employability levels? Should the federal government be thinking about closing down or merging some federal universities? So two stories so far on today's Big Three. We've got one more to go, but let's hear your thoughts. 01465-7190-0700-993-993-993. Men and women, let's hear your thoughts. Hello. Sorry about that. Call back if you can. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name, ma'am? My name is Rosie. Welcome. Go ahead. You see, when you talk about education, mm -hmm. the problem is because our government, their children are not schooling here. Okay. And they say the money is not there. Why don't they cut down their budget? When you look at other countries, when this kind of problem appears, they reduce their budget, just like in their house. If you are earning salary and you know that your salary is no longer carrying you, you have to cut down what you want to what you need. Do you get that? Okay. You don't go for what you want over what you need. There are some essential needs that are just what you want. Okay. Just like somebody who just lost a job. Mm. You need a car. No. You just need to survive. And you see them until everybody started schooling in Nigeria. This thing cannot be solved, you see, and they, they, they are doing it intentionally because they want poor man's children to keep serving them. Because if everyone is educated, who wants to serve who? All right. Thanks for calling. I don't think it's that sinister. And I'm not one of those who uh, subscribes to this idea that we have to force our lawmakers to have their children go to school here. Uh, because, again, <laughs> uh, even these lawmakers, regardless of whether you like them or not, they have rights. And uh, some of those rights include deciding where their children and can be educated. But, um, I mean, it, it is a debate about, oh, should we force them to go to school here? Maybe we should make it a debate topic. All right. Let's go to WhatsApp where we have come as well what comments do we have richard from lagos he says hello sandra the solutions to the hasu sanu nasu federal government impasse is simple the cost of governance at both the executive and legislative arms should be reduced to free up funds our democracy here is way too expensive than our peers anywhere else they say they don't have money but they can easily fund their lavish lifestyle and easily afford to purchase presidential nomination form sandra who is the saving who please Okay, next one, as quickly as possible, says, please. Good afternoon, Sandra. The government of Nigeria is the problem. Not that they cannot fi fi fund the university, but politicians, bogus lifestyle is what is taking away the money. Look at the amount of budget for president for feeding in this year budget is in billions. Unless a law is in place, banning them to send their words abroad for schooling and scale down their salaries. Abraham from Adinyo, Ogun State. Gabriel from always, he says, government have no interest in public school again. That is why they turn deaf ear to ASU. Besides, it doesn't affect them except God touch them. This is saying, ASU, SANU, and NASU are all in agreement to allow children of the poor to go to to not go to school. They want school to charge high fees. All right, let's talk to Igwe Victor, who's on the line. Hi, Victor. Are you there? Oh, Victor is not there anymore. 99.3, hello. Hello, Sandra. Thanks for calling. What's your name? My name is Mercy. All right. Mercy, hi. Welcome. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um. Here's 
take on the sa ano asu issue. Mm-hmm. Hello. Yes, I'm here. I'm listening. Hmm? So I think that um, first of all, the government it, it we cannot say that um, the government should be having their own salary, and then the staff of the public schools should be funding their own salary. Where does remittance go to? It's not to the government. If we are looking for ways to generate funds, mm. then a certain amount of remittance, because whenever we pay our school fees, and then there's um, a way maybe you pay your school fees in ex- excess, mm. though I'm a graduate, mm-hmm. you pay your school fees in excess. Mm-hmm. When you go for reform, they always tell you it's remittance. You have to go through so many process and wait for months. Mm-hmm before you can get your school fees back. And most times, you even end up not getting it back. Okay. They said it's usually very tough to get um, money that goes to remitter. Okay. So you can pay to a school direct that you can easily get. So this money, I mean, you know how much um, cost students go to um, public schools? Mm-hmm. Because that's the one that they can afford the most. So when people go to those these schools, you see thousands of people jam intake of jam every year increases. So if we have to we have to fund their money have to fund their own um institution, I don't think that um these institutions are going to be selling shares to private sector. And it's not going to be privatization in in that I don't really know how else to see this. Hmm. Because when you say we should fund and then um, keep up less funding our own um, educational sector, mm-hmm. what is public is public and what is private is private. There, is, there, is, there, there are distinctions. I'm going to private school, I'm going to private school. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to public school, I'm going to public school. So, what um, edges are these private sector if they come to partner? What is going to be their thing? I think they think it is certainly. Um, it's because they are still paying their tax, we cannot dispute that fact. Yeah, and then so there's so much we have to um, think about before um, saying looking for ways for the public sectors to um, generate um, income for the school. Okay, thank you. All right, Mercy, thank you so much for calling. We've got Prince on the line. Hi, Prince. How are you, Sandra? I'm, I'm very well. How are you? I'm very okay, my dear. Welcome. Go ahead. You see, we I think we, we learned last week the Shia government approved uh, more university. Yes. Like just last two, one week or two weeks ago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, if somebody can't do the existing one, why do we approach for another one? That's a big problem. I think it did. We have to spend million, billion, trillion on education. I was told at this at home. If they settle us by now, I think they will be at work. Our children will be at school. Now we are talking of cutting cities or that. Then we are not working anything. We are talking of we are now. All those words at this at home. I did not learn a lot of things. When you see what is shown on TV today, if you are not at home, you see what children watch on daily, it is a lot of a, 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 a thing that is, that is bad. So for me, the flag government, they should say to us right now, and by taking another university I'm against it, the existing one, make sure you fund them and let, let them have sad education in this country. That for that. And for security in this country today, mm. as I'm talking to you, if I'm in position of authority, I put myself in the shoe of Mr. President. I mean, the security advice to Mr. President should go. The defense minister has no duty now in that office. As of today, uh, my own solution now to the problem, maybe our military, they were tired. Because some people have benefited from what is going on in this country today. We are talking about these people who are dying, people who are dying. Me, me, me. Some people are making a lot of money out of this because corruption is what keep us, keep, us, keep us where we are right now. I want to address Mr. President. The service chief, those people fighting for Nigeria, if we, if we, if we, if we, if we to die for Nigeria, that will be clear. Saturday time three, allow us to prepare the record time. 
is a comprehensive insurance cover for their family if anything happens to them. All this will be just our ministry. It will be think that then to ready to die for the country. Sandra, mm. happy with you with your studio, my dear. Thank you very much, Prince, for calling. Now, out of 2.5 million new voter registrations, almost 1.4 million are invalid. That's our third story. That data is coming from INEC chairman Mahmoud Yakubu. He said some of the invalid registrations were caused by incomplete information. Others, he said, were caused by voters trying to register more than once. Sometimes that was because they did not understand that the existing registration is still valid. Because remember, some people have incorrectly suggested that PVCs expire. Other times, according to Yakubu, it was due to attempted fraud. Someone is trying to register multiple times so that they can have multiple votes. Yakubu also said that uh, some INEC staff may have been involved in helping people to try to cheat the system. 2.5 million new voter registration, 1.4 million invalid. What I really want to know is what you think about the efficiency of this system and this situation. First of all, what do you think about the long lag time between someone attempting to register and INEC finding out that there was a problem with the registration? Because let's say that the person made an honest mistake. Maybe they didn't give all the information they needed to. Uh, maybe there was a transcription error. That person has walked away thinking that they have a valid registration. And now, months later, they find out that the registration has been rejected. And basically, there was no chance between then and now for them to fix the issue. And then there's the fraud. Yakubu did not say what percentage of the invalid registrations were caused by fraud. So we don't know how serious that problem is. But it is a problem. With less than a year until the election, I want to know whether this affects your confidence that INEC can deliver a free, fair and credible election. Zero one four six five seven one nine zero zero one four six five seven one nine zero between four and five on eyewitness we'll continue a conversation we started on Tuesday about the institutions in Nigeria. Do they enable domestic violence? What we are getting about Usinachi's death are eyewitness accounts. And those eyewitness accounts seem to be showing us how different institutions did not protect Usinachi. So between four and five, you and I will talk about institutions. Do they enable domestic violence? But for right now, talk to me about our three stories on today's Big Three. Can public tertiary education be salvaged? Can the security architecture be improved? How can INEC reduce voter registration failure rates? 99.3, hello? Hello? Hello, hello, President Sandra. Thanks for calling. Um, uh, Grandma Victoria from Lagos Island. Welcome, ma'am. Thanks for calling us. Um, education should be a priority for the Nigerian state. Okay. And nothing should be allowed to compromise the... Uh, the Nigerian people to educate the youth because the youth is the future of the Nigerian uh, of, the, of the Nigerian country that we are looking into. Yeah. If our children are not educated, then there is no hope for us. Yeah. There are so many ways that um, the Nigerian government can make funds available to educate uh, our youth. Okay. There is so much wastage in the system. Mm. And, uh, for instance, uh, the salaries of the, the, the people in the National Assembly can be reduced drastically and the house can be collapsed into a one single house legislating body. Okay. And there are so many areas that the government can also look to, look into, into the executive expenditure, the, there's so many uh, aeroplanes that uh, the federal government is, is, is using that we don't really need. Okay. And, and even in the civil service, there is so much corruption. Okay. And uh, I believe Nigerian government can do it if they really want to do it. And it should.
to should be a priority project. Our children must not suffer, no matter whatever happens. The moment they, they don't uh, concentrate into the education of the youth, the, the, the Nigerian state is finished because uh, the children are the future of tomorrow. And all resources must be made available to pay the teachers and uh, to make them happy. It's, 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 it's a tax that must be done. And uh, we believe that any government that really loves uh, the, the, the generation, this generation will do, will do the right thing. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Grandma Victoria, for calling. We appreciate it. Victor is back on the line. Hi, Victor. Hello, good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome. <laughs> I normally enjoy your program. I'm glad. Yeah. Um, looking at the big three today, mm-hmm. um, you begin to take a reflection about inability of government to handle the major three big um, topics we have this afternoon. Somebody called from Ajawa State. The first respondent of, of this uh, discussion this afternoon called from Ajawa State. Yeah. He mentioned a lot of things, including the security, including uh, power, including education, which we are, which is part of our discussion this afternoon. Right. Then, if you take overview of the whole thing we are talking about as a country, which particular aspect do we have improvement? Is it um, is it a petrol? that that we have at our backyard that we are the producers of petroleum is it a uh, power as i'm talking to you i'm just recuperating from surgery a bad light in the house except when i use gen then to get the petrol is an issue mm. so what are we what can we say we are proud of or what we can say we we, we are proud of being part of a country or being uh, citizens of a country i believe after every four years, we go and delegitimize this operation called um, politicians. They will continue to deal with us each four years. I think it's high time we started talking of restructure and collapsing the system in order to make good means of life so that people will have very good meaning of life. As a Nigerian, nobody can define good life of anything. Thank you so much, President Sandra. Thank you very much for calling Igwe Victor. Well, restructuring is a big a big part of uh, the political discourse these days. It has been uh, louder and louder in the past few years. It could uh, you know, be one of the defining um, uh, factors in the upcoming elections. You know, So, who knows? Alabas says Sandra, I'm a big fan of PMB and I'm an APC member. Truth be told, the staying at home of both lecturers and the students is as a result that uh, President Muhammad Buhari, Ngige and Wajuba do not like and value education. If it continues like this for the next one month, nobody should blame any youth uh, that they see doing Yahoo Yahoo or eat all other vices just to make money. I will still blame them because there are other things you can do that are legal. Uh, why go straight to fraud? Anyways, Alaba says uh, they've deprived them of access to quality and uh, timely education. All APC leaders should wake up because this is what opposition will use to campaign against our party. And issues on security, PMB should decentralize policing structure. This is the only way to curb the menace. All current security architecture has its appointed Nigerians, so therefore, we need serious changes. Lastly, INEC should not tell Nigerians super story. They should go and do all that they can. Nigerians must must vote come 2023. Alaba with that message there. Azu Frank is calling us. Hi, Azu Frank. Oh, he's not there anymore. Okay, let's go very quickly to WhatsApp. Very quickly. As many messages as you can take. If I Okulise from Gwilere says, My take is that the children of the public office holders and those of lecturers should be banned from attending tertiary institution abroad so they can feel the pinch of bastardizing public higher institution. What is President even saying about the universities that are shut currently as a result of the strike that seems to have defied every solution? Quick, 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 quick. Says Philip from Lekki. He says, the federal government is not concerned with the ASU strike because their children are not affected. Their children are in private universities abroad. When the COVID-19 pandemic broke out, drastic measures were put in place because it affected them as well. God is watching. This is saying, if government claim they can afford 
claim they can't afford the money for universities needed while planning to create more. A same government will have cut down the jumbo salaries of the senators to settle the lecturer springs from Aja. All right, let's talk to Azu Frank. Hi, Azu Frank. How are you? Hi, Sandra. I'm good. Welcome. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm alive. Oh, thank God. Um, there was a caller, Brahma, I think is she called, she identified herself as Brahma. Mm -hmm. She said something that uh, if Nigerian government is ready, they will be able to do it. That was striking to me. If we are ready, that's, you know, the underlying part. Are we ready? I don't think so. See, Sandra, hmm. let me, well, um, I want to talk about the um, ASU and the university, our tertiary institution. Okay. Just imagine Nupeng today decides to go on a nationwide strike. What do you think will happen? Like, the government and the people will sit up and say, hey, Nupeng, please, you need to work. You know why? Mm -hmm. We need the full world. Right. Now, we are not complaining now. There's no there's no um, protest or people are not agitating because somehow they can get the full world. But if Nupeng should say today we are not doing anything nobody's going to get a drop a liter anywhere the people will rally around the government will rally around and fix it now what does that mean we handle education with nonchalant hands like we don't care we handle um, um, power we, uh, that's electricity we handle healthcare. all these ones like with frivolities we don't care but we are so selfish like, oh, it is when it's not affecting us, when we cannot buy fuel. That's when you will not see us start, oh, no, government must do something. Government must. At the end of the day, it's all about us. It's we. How serious do we see these things? It's not about, oh, don't tell, don't let the, let the politicians take their children there. Oh, no, no, no. All these things are just, you know, beating around. How every one of us, how really sure are we interested in, you know, because, okay, as it goes on strike, the um, public schools are not working, we can get the private. We always have a way around things. Mm -hmm. But if Nupeng now, because we cannot get the floor somewhere else, goes on strike, just Nupeng, we will sit up. Sandra, <laughs> I'm waiting to hear from our guy that is the guy that is testing the if Juju is real. <laughs> You're doing a very nice job. All right. Thanks for calling us, Azu Frank. Yes, uh, Benga Dewi will be joining us at 5 o'clock. Benga has gone to Ibadan. He has gone to Oshun State. He has gone to Anambra now. And so far, nobody has been able to take his 2.5 million era and prove to him in a controlled environment on camera that Juju is real. He'll talk to us about his journey at 5. Don't miss that conversation. Uh, we've got... Uh, Olodu Demuiwa, who says, INEC should employ tech-savvy graduates and use good servers. They should vet all submissions properly. For security, we need an overhaul of the security architecture. Police should engage in undercover investigation and confidentially pass their uh, findings on to the military secretly. And the military should equally be well-loaded with ammunition. Elvis says, my people, join me. Uh, Elvis, why are you advertising on my Facebook without paying me for that advert? Eh? 99.3. Hello. Hello. Hello, Sandra. Thanks for calling. What's your name, ma'am? Yeah, hi. This is Alex. Alex, welcome. <coughs> yeah, Sandra. <coughs> there is this thing. Let me quickly read it to you. It says, first, they came for the socialists. Mm. And I did not speak out wow. because I was not a socialist. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Then they came for the, for the trade unionists. I didn't speak out because I was in a trade union. Mm -hmm. Then they came for the Jews. And I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me. There was no one left to speak for me. Hello? I'm here. I love that yes. poem. I know that Excellent. poem. Excellent. So, so where it. are we going here? It's like what the other caller, I think it was Azu Frank that said. It's like everybody is left to fight their own individual fight. The right. truth is that. Government is a very powerful machinery. It's a very powerful institution. No, in, no individual unit can stand and fight the government except you are carrying arms. I told you the other day, Sandra, mm -hmm. that when you're not carrying arms, these people don't listen to you. You see how quickly they pay the, 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 the kidnappers? 100 million, one time, the money don't come out. You understand? Hello? Yes, I'm listening. Uh, but it's true. It's true because they're not carrying arms. So what I'm, I'm not now encouraging you to carry arms. But what I'm saying is at some point, Nigeria, because I know we discuss a lot of politics. 
without discussing national development. Right. At some point, Nigerians will have to come together, not as, not as a political group. We have to find a way to capture our, all of our, our attention so that we can drive our energy towards developing our nation. Africa cannot fight as we fight alone. Uh, Alex, thank you so much for calling. Unfortunately, I'm out of time. I need to bring you business news. But don't go away because we're going to talk about our institutions, right? Alex talks about national development. One of the things that helps with national development are our institutions. Now, when it comes to um, domestic violence, do our institutions encourage it? Do they encourage escape? I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. It's four o'clock. Four o'clock. Ninety-nine point three Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info ninety nine point three. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. Ninety nine point three Nigeria Info. Let's talk.